Hey everybody, it's Scott coming to you live from the sanctuary. You were watching The Voice of the Harbinger and uh, wanted to uh, uh, just update you on a few things. First of all, I had just an absolutely awesome time ministering uh, up north this last weekend and uh, meeting with some pastors, uh, meeting with the church elders and board and also had just a great meeting on Sunday morning, uh, praying for the sick, people uh, responding for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, just really a great time and uh, I am on day 22 of the fast that I'm fasting this uh, month uh, ending it on the 31st and I finished the 21 day Daniel fast I'm now going to go for the next 10 days on a liquid fast and just really believing God for just some awesome things to take place as we are all uh, many of us fasting all over the world and uh, believing God for uh, being prepared for the days to come, having revelation that we need uh, for the for the for this year and the next decade, and that the Lord would just continue to break us and put us more uh, into a Christ-like way and just keep changing us so that there's less of us and more of Him until we eventually get to a place where there's none of us and all of Him. That's our desire and that's what we're after, uh, being prepared for His coming as His uh, virgin, holy and spotless bride, the glorious remnant bride. I want to uh, also share with you a few things. Uh, I've been given the opportunity to do some additional travel this year uh, in missions work and I'm uh, praying about it. Uh, I would definitely need support financially. And um, as I share this, if that's on any of your hearts that you'd say, yeah, uh, Scott, I, would, I believe in your ministry. I would support you. Uh, let me know. Uh, the first one would happen next month. I just found out about this a few days ago. I had the opportunity to go to Haiti where I would be involved in a um, uh, crusade where I could be speaking to 50 to 100,000 people. Uh, I'm uncertain about that one. I'm praying about it. I would need uh, about $1,500 to come in real quick on that one. The other one is in August to go to Ghana, and I'm praying about that as I have uh, many uh, besides this one trip, there are other ministries that have churches in Ghana that I might be able to make it a trip to where I could connect two or three different ministries at the same time and be able to uh, be a blessing there. Um, and that would probably cost me about another $2,500 to $3,000. So I'm um, definitely believing God for a lot of finances to come in. And uh, if you would be praying about that, and again, if you're if God's speaking to you about that, please uh, let me know. Either instant message me, comment on a video or on Facebook, and that'll help me to know uh, as I'm praying about these as to um, whether I'd have the support if I feel God saying yes. Now, I wanted to continue talking about the first part of the three words that I was given in 2020 uh, or for 2020. The first one is division. Uh, which includes the word separation. And uh, I was talking about um, uh, just how we need to separate unto the Lord, that I really see that there is this separation taking place uh, in the church. And we saw from the beginning of the year, the Methodist church split over the LGBTQ question, uh, several of them going the wrong way and uh, some of them going the right way. And um, and so um, there's a, uh, as I was preparing to minister on January 5th at a church and sharing some of this uh, word that I had gotten for 2020, this old lyric came to me from a song, you probably remember from the 70s, it said, yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. Many of us heard that over and over again in the 70s. It was played on the air all the time. It's still played today. And I tell you, this is where I think a lot of the church is at. They're sitting there thinking, well, you know, I don't have to be that radical. I don't have to be that crazy. I don't have to really pursue Jesus that hard. I've kind of got my ticket to heaven because I prayed my prayer of salvation. And um, he's going to, he loves me and he's going to accept me and he's going to take me in because so many ministers are telling me that. And I see it on TV and I hear it on the radio. And um, they're, they're not pursuing and they're not um, studying the word of God and really looking at those words of Jesus and what he really had to say about the straight and narrow path. Uh, those that are that would come to him and he would say he didn't know them. He says that multiple times and as well as many of the scriptures that talk about uh, those who uh, were cast out. He Many times he's speaking of the same people, those entering in 
as Christians and those also not getting in who are Christians, like the Ten Virgins is another example. And they're just not seeing these things and not thinking that they have to pursue uh, with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, as the Scripture teaches us, that we're to love the Lord God for the, for the Lord uh is is the God, is the one true God, there is no other God, and that we're to give him our all. And uh, that is such a deceptive idea that there's two paths, and at some point we can just change our mind, and we're going to uh, go ahead and correct it. And I shared last time that as I see it, that the path uh, that people are going down, even though there's Christians, there's Christians going down two separate paths. Some are pursuing God with their whole heart, and there's other ones who are following this other path. And yet, they might be going to church, they might be tithing, they might be serving. Um, they're, they're, they they might even have their, their time in the morning with the Lord, but they're just not pursuing Him. They're not changing their life. They're at church on Sunday, and the rest of the week, they're not connected with Him. They're just doing their own thing, um, and they're just not after God with their whole heart. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, uh, there's there's some, are, I'm just going to tell you this, they're not going to get in. There's others who are going to get in, but they're not going to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And then there's going to be the others who in these last days, when God moves upon the face of the earth and the greatest move of God that we've ever seen is if he fulfills the Feast of Tabernacles through the church at the end of days and the greatest harvest happens, that these are the ones who are going to have the glory of God upon them and their other brethren, these other two that I mentioned, are going to be looking at them and they're going to see their brethren walking in the glory of God and they're not going to be able to participate at that time, that time because the, the price to be paid to be able to be involved Involved in that is uh, it can't can't be caught in one day. It's just not going to happen. That time will have passed, and they'll have missed out on what God's doing. As for me, I want all that God has for me. I want to be involved in that last day's move of God. I want to hear Him say, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." I want to be know for a fact that I am entering into the kingdom of God because I did everything that I knew to do and uh, obeyed Him with my whole heart. Another scripture uh, I wanted to share with you today, 2 Timothy 3.13, says, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This Timothy was speaking of by the unction of the Spirit of God regarding the last days. He says, Evil men, bad or unsound men, and impostors, the word there literally is diviner in the Greek, someone that's a diviner, you know, like a spiritist uh, in the body of Christ. These impostors, in the body. An imposter is not someone who's outside the body. An imposter is someone who's in the body, who's a minister of God that people are looking up to. And these people are imposters. They're fake. They're not real. They're flowing by a different spirit other than the spirit of God. They're operating in spiritism in a sense. Here's what he's saying. These imposters, these diviners, these cheats, the word is, uh, could be implied in the Greek, uh, will grow worse and worse increasing in the body of Christ, deceiving the very elect. He says these will grow worse and worse, deceiving and themselves being deceived as they continue in the path. And for whatever reasons, due to wrong motivations or intentions or desires or selfishness, um, maybe at some point having a good uh, heart to want to serve God, but somehow allowing selfishness, allowing um, their own desires, allowing um, wrong intentions uh, and, and or wrong beliefs to enter in and allowing that to happen gets them to go off and, and, and go astray, yet they continue ministering and keep um, maybe satisfying itching ears. We see that in the scripture that this is what's to happen. And what, what happens to them is not only that they begin to be deceived, but as they continue in this path, it says they will deceive and they will continue being deceived. It's going to get worse and worse. This is the division that we're talking about. And we're seeing it that there are, there are ministers and churches who are, uh, who are speaking one thing, and then there's a lesser, fewer that are speaking the truth, that are hanging on to 
to the truth of God's word and continuing to proclaim exactly what, what was spoken in the scripture and hanging on to that, not for their own gain, but to build the kingdom of God, whether people leave their churches, whether people tune them off or unfriend them on Facebook or whatever happens, these ones are going to hold to the truth. If very little here or if many here, it doesn't matter to them because they're going to hear God and they're going to obey God and they're going to speak the truth regardless. Um, I, I said last time there's going to be those who are going to find themselves at the wedding feast of the Lamb, the scripture says, and Jesus, is, or the Father, is going to say, uh, why did you come in here with the wrong garment on? And they're going to say, uh, they're going to have no excuse. And the scripture says that they will be cast out of the wedding feast. We don't want to find ourselves to be in that position. The division takes place here now on earth. The separation takes place now. Even this year, I feel so strongly about it. I, I, I just have an urgency to continue to tell people that the time is short and we don't have time to play around anymore. We're coming into a season where we're going to be seeing the Spirit of God move in great ways. We're going to see harvest taking place. We're coming into a season where we're, go we're going to see an onslaught of the enemy like we've never seen before. And those who don't make a decision to follow God with their entire heart, with their whole heart, are going to find themselves walking down the wrong path and being separated. I mean, God forbid that it should come to a place uh, where something catastrophic catastrophic happens. So many Christians, I believe, will turn the, against God. They will blame God and they will, they, they, they will not have themselves built up in faith. They won't be ready. And when the, the disaster strikes, what are they going to do? I just sense that so many Christians just think this is never going to happen in the United States or this is never going to happen in my lifetime. They live their lives like an ostrich with their head in the sand and they don't see what's coming and they don't recognize. They're waiting for others to speak to them and tell them that they need to do something, that they need to prepare. And yet their pastor and those that they listen to are saying nothing and are just letting time go by, collecting money and receiving a good income from the people and just continuing to say things that satisfy them versus saying the truth and speaking the truth. And I'm telling you that we they've got to wake up. We've got to wake up and see what what's going on. It's it's you know why do we constantly think that this stuff is going to happen in some other generation? This is going to happen somewhere in the future. We've got to see that these things are coming upon the earth. They're coming upon us faster than we than ever before. I've shared many times that I felt a prophetic word uh, or that I received and I gave back in 2015, September of 2015, that we were going to have seven good years followed by after that seven years that something was going to happen. That was in 2015. We're now in 2020, 2020 and in 2022 that seven years will expire. I believe I heard the word of the Lord and I don't know what's going to happen, but I really believe that we are closer than ever to things uh, being adverse for people, even in the United States, and that we've got to see that it's coming and we've got to be prepared. Um, I want to also uh, talk about um, something else uh, that really I want to share that I received today, and that was uh, I was just studying about the uh, the new wineskin and looking at the passages that speak of that. I was actually looking at something else, but I saw a, a Greek word that said was used in those two passages in Matthew and Mark, Matthew 9 and, and Mark 2. You can look those up. Uh, but in, in Matthew 16 and 17, I'm going to read it to you um, as I studied it out in the Greek and to what it literally means. And this is what it says. He, it says, no one puts a patch of new cloth on a not new garment for the whole of it the whole of that patch, the whole of it will be taken up or taken away and or lifted up and removed from the garment. And a worse or more severe tear or schism or division or split even into parties is made. That's literally what that Greek is saying there. So he's talking about the fact that if you were to put a patch on a not new garment, and I like it, I like that it says that, you know, it's translated an old garment. But old, I think sometimes we think of as ancient. And I want us to think about the fact that um, it can seem new. When we're talking about the body of Christ, there can be truths that seem new. Truths that were restored in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. These things can seem new, but they're not new anymore. And he's saying if we try to put 
a patch on something that's not new. It's not the most current revelation. It's not the newest thing that God is speaking. I, I want to tell you something. I was just speaking to an apostle the other day that I haven't spoken to in quite a while. And him and I were speaking and he's telling me, you need to read this book. And I'm like, I'm, I'm reading some of that guy's books right now. And it, it was just amazing that he's reading that same author. I'm reading that same author from the early 1900s. And there's things that were revelation at the time when God poured out the baptism of the Holy Spirit again on the earth, even in the 20s, 30s, 40s, things that have that were revelation to the church that have kind of gone to the wayside and we've forgotten about. Part of what I believe is being revived, besides prayer at this time and evangelism coming back, part of what I believe, in, believe is going to be rely, revived is not new revelation that we've never heard before, but revelation that has been around, that's going to come back to the church, that we are going to have revived old truth that was revealed to great men and women of God that is going to again resurface and be brought back to the church, maybe even a little bit new revelation added for a new generation, for a new time, for a new season, to make it a now revelation for the moment that God is getting ready to do something amazing in the earth. And we're going to see some of that happen as well. But I would just wanted to continue on this verse and finish up with this today. So we're talking about division. No one puts a patch of new cloth on a not new garment for the whole of it. The whole of that which you're trying to apply, the new the new wineskin, trying to attach it to something that's old. He says that this the whole of that new wineskin will be taken or lifted up and away. It'll be removed from the garment and a worse or more severe tear, schism, division, or split into parties is made. And I think this is a lot of what we're seeing take place in the body of Christ that's bringing the division and the separation is that, that churches are trying to stay the way they were and yet add a little bit of the new wineskin and not seeing that God is not trying to just rock the boat, but that the boat is flipped over and God is trying to right the ship which takes immense effort. I shared uh, just recently, I was speaking uh, this weekend, and I was sharing with the body there that if if we see that God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, the scripture says, this is about to be fulfilled. This is the immensity of the wine that is going to be poured out, the new wine for the last day's move of God. If he is going to do that, and that's how large it is, then the new wineskin that needs to be able to take in that wine has to be just as immense, just as large, just as enormous. So we are talking about a major change in the church. We are talking about a major reformation that has to happen. And as we continue in the second verse there, verse 17, he says, um, neither is new or fresh wine put into a not new or old wineskin. Again, I like that, 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 that Greek word coming out as not new. Not new wineskin. A wineskin that's there, but it's just not quite new. Not caught up to what God is doing. Still embracing portions of the old. Neither is new wine or fresh wine put into not new or old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst or break or shatter into pieces, it says in the Greek. They burst, break, or shatter into pieces, and the wine is spilled or scattered, and the skins are utterly destroyed and brought to nothing. So again, we see this whole idea here. We saw in the first verse there that he talked about that the that a division occurs, a greater separating, a splitting, even into different parties. It's the very thing that we saw in the Methodist Church, trying to hang on to something uh, old. They're, tr they're actually inviting sin in, in a sense, and thinking that they're doing something new. But what that newness is, is newness of sin for a generation that is not acceptable according to the truth of God's Word that's causing a division. But I believe that the same thing will happen as the Spirit of God continues to move, and He is moving. He's been moving since I saw Him moving last uh, uh, March 30th, I think it was. And um, 
in the dream that I had. I believe he's moving across the face of the earth. I believe some of the new wine is already starting to trickle. And if we try to put it on old wine skins, a patch to allow for that new wine to come in, I sense that it is going to cause a shattering into pieces. It's going to cause greater division. It's going to cause greater splitting, even into parties for churches, uh, which is going to end up that the worst, uh, the end is going to be worse than the beginning. Lastly, he finishes that verse with, but new or fresh wine is put into new or recently made wineskins. And so both are preserved or kept safe and sound, secured from harm and protected. Now, let me read this to you, that in the Greek, that this, um, these new wineskins, the scripture says, uh, it calls them new wine skins. That new wine is put into new wine skins. And I read that to you that new or recently made wine skins. But it also can have this meaning in the Greek that it, it says that it could be uh, that these wine skins could be unusual or unheard of. Uh, of or of a higher excellence. And I don't think, I'm not trying to say that they're better in being a higher excellence, but what I do see is that they are more divine. They're more of what God wanted. They reach a higher level in ministry, a higher character, in the people, a higher character, a higher uh, righteousness, a higher holiness. What is holiness? But holiness is a higher excellence than what we see in, uh, in those that are just living more casual Christian lifestyles. Holiness separates us unto God in a higher way and separates us away from things in the world, but puts us in a position where we can hear from God, receive from God, be used from God, by God, and be be uh, have the glory of God pour upon our lives in a greater measure. So I'll read that again. But new or fresh wine, the new wine that God's getting ready to pour out onto the earth, is put into new or recently made, maybe unusual or unheard of wine skins of a higher excellence. So I like that unusual or unheard of. You know, some people just. You know, they, they, they're they so used to hearing what's on TV, so used to hearing uh, what is, uh, what's on the radio, so used to hearing maybe what they hear at church, but not hearing the truth of God's word, something that to them might seem unheard of, might seem to them unusual, might seem to them of a higher excellence, maybe even thinking to themselves that it's something that cannot be obtained. But I tell you that the new wineskin is something that we can do. I believe there is a grace that is poured out for these last days upon the body. There's a grace that is poured out in these last days for ministry. And I believe that we're going to see that by that grace, if we tap into it, we surrender to God, we yield to him, we yield to the spirit, we allow the spirit to enable us to be able to do things that we would otherwise be powerless to perform. If we yield to that and surrender to him, he will empower us. He will give us the ability to do things that have never been heard of, to do things in maybe even unusual ways, to do things maybe even of a higher excellence than we've seen the church walk in in many decades. But we're going to see it happen. It's going to be a new wine poured out on those who have embraced the new wine skin and have done are going to do things differently. They're open to God. They're willing to allow him to do whatever whatever it takes. They're not keeping their heads in the sand, but they've pulled them out. And their eyes are wide open and they're looking and seeing and realizing that God is getting ready to do something just totally amazing. And they're preparing themselves for it and readying themselves for that day. That's all I want to talk about for today as we t continue to talk about that word division. But I thank you for listening. God bless you guys. I love you. Have an awesome night and I'll talk to you again real soon.